Meditation 12 Thy prompt is brought down to the grave. How art thou cut down to the ground? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, I will, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the side of the pit. Again, thy prompt is brought down to the grave. How art thou cut down to the ground? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, I will, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the side of the pit. Pride, wickedness out of goodness. The fundamental tenet of Christianity is the need for mankind to experience deliverance. Mankind needs salvation. The irony of this deliverance, however, is that man needs to escape from himself. Because of the nature of the creation of mankind and the fall of mankind into degradation, the creature itself is its own enemy. Fallen man must experience deliverance from what he has become. Ultimately, salvation is not the escape from an external force. The deliverance that is needed by man is a deliverance from the fibers of the core of himself. It is deliverance from that which has become wicked, the essence of his being. In one of the most profound paradoxes of the universe, fallen man now experiences in the reality of his being the results of that which was created good. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Wickedness, because of the very nature of the holiness of God, the ultimate and supreme good one, must in some way have its beginning out of the goodness of creation. Wickedness as strange as it may seem, evolved out of that which was good. For wickedness to originate in any other way would make God the creator of wickedness, which would be an impossible violation of the very nature of God. The following examples will serve to illustrate the principle of wickedness out of goodness. The king of Taurus, because of the extreme created goodness given by God, became proud of that goodness and wickedness followed. He was created with supreme goodness. Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, the anointed seraph. Thou was perfect in thy ways. However, he could not handle that goodness. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. In the case of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar had become the king of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. In his day, he had become the epitome of created beauty, but became the degradation of personified wickedness. Thy prompt is brought down to the grave. How art thou cut down to the ground? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, I will. I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. 
Out of the very being of created goodness, wickedness germinated. It was also in the extreme created goodness of Adam and Eve that they were tempted with, Ye shall be as gods. For Adam and Eve to believe that lie, there had to be some basis on which they thought it was possible. It was in their created goodness, the very image of God, that pride arose, which eventually produced wickedness in man. Wickedness always germinates out of goodness. Likewise, it is the experiencing of the goodness of God to fallen man through his encounter with Jesus that creates the goodness which can become the temptation by man to perceive God's goodness as his own goodness. It is in man's perceived goodness, which in reality is God's goodness, that man first faces defeat and wickedness. To put it somewhat crudely and greatly oversimplified, God just did too good a job in his creative acts. The king of Babylon was created so beautifully, but he could not handle the pride that began to swell from within his beauty. Adam and Eve, created in the image of God with the ability to think, to feel, and to will, were brought into the fall through the very temptation of experiencing God's handiwork of created goodness. Created so good, they evidently actually thought that there was a possibility that they could become gods. When the Holy Spirit regenerates the fallen man, and Christ begins to live in and through the believer, supernatural enabling power flowing through the believer also creates the possibility for the believer to be tempted into perceiving that supernatural goodness as his own. Thus. Pride can be defined as glorying in the created goodness as if it is, in fact, the creature's goodness. It is not as though goodness were not there in the creature. It is. But the creature simply does not recognize the source of the goodness. the plight of all the problems of mankind probably can be traced to this conflict of the source of goodness. The struggle transpires not only in the relationship between the Creator and the creature, it also rages in the relationship between the creatures. For example, in the very instance in the New Testament where pride is mentioned, it is in the negative connotation of an exaggerated estimate of one's means or merit. Consequently, the question has to be raised, an exaggerated estimate in comparison to what? In relation to God, it is indeed forgetting or ignoring that all good things come from God. Pride then would be manifested in the creature by the failure to glory in God as the creator of his goodness and begin to glory in the creature as the source of the goodness. Pride, however, is not restricted to just the contamination of the relationship between the Creator and the creature. Just as is illustrated by Paul in his description of the manifested wrath of God in the first chapter of his letter to the Romans, the relationship between the creatures are also contaminated. In the light of the creation of mankind as co-humanity, male and female created he them, Genesis 1.27, based upon the trinitary model of the being of God, pride then in the relationship of the creatures is the perceived elevation of oneself above others.
Since the creation of the other, Eve, was to complete the person, Adam, it should not be difficult to see why the putting down of others is so damaging. If a person can be identified as one who has his ground of being in another, the exaggerated estimate of one's being above another is, in reality, the essence of death. It is only man who is created with the ability to think about his thinking that can reject the provision in his mind which God gave him to function as he is intended to do. Because of pride, man is the only created being who can kill himself. Pride, that which comes about by a false estimation of oneself, is indeed the scourge of humanity. Pride has brought mankind to its lowest death. Fallen humanity is a dying testimony to the reality and pain of being separated from God and from others. Although individual man is constantly lifting himself up above others, there is also the constant fear of being rejected by others. He is caught in a dilemma. Needing others, yet fearing others, fallen man is extremely vulnerable. To survive, he plays the game, wears the mask, and acts out the rows which in reality are the sentences of death. Just as the original parents, fallen mankind hides in fear with shame ready to blame others for its predicament. Separated from God and from others, man hides in his isolation. Marred in a futile dilemma, mankind is hopelessly lost. When pride awakens, grace dies. Thought and Prayer for Today Heavenly Father, I thank you and worship you for all the goodness that you have created. I thank you for this day. I thank you for life that you have given me. I thank you for living within me. I sincerely pray that as I experience your goodness today, cause me to recognize that it is your goodness and not mine. By your grace and power, help me continually to live in the reality that you and you alone are good. Perhaps she would like to pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you and worship you for all the goodness that you have created. I thank you for this day. I thank you for life that you have given me. I thank you for living within me. I sincerely pray that as I experience your goodness today, cause me to recognize that it is your goodness and not mine. By your grace and power, help me continually to live in the reality that you and you alone are good. This I pray. Amen.